In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is risen. Jesus. It's quite shocking. After all this time, that there are still so many stumbling and groping in darkness. Can you imagine all the wasted energy, the wasted life, money, resources. So much has been wasted for people chasing down immortality, looking for the fountain of youth, looking for that ultimate high, looking for something, anything, to give them a sense that this life is permanent, that this life is perfect. Our Lord says to us, if anyone wants to serve me, he must lose his life. He also says to us that if a grain of wheat falls, it abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth fruit a hundredfold. You don't plant an apple seed and get an acorn tree. You don't plant broccoli and get carrots. How is it then that after all this time, so many saints, so many holy ones who have produced the proper fruit, how is it that still we can chase after the world, like the world, groping blind, looking for something to pacify the time, looking for something to validate all the brokenness, all the backwards things in this world, how is it? You don't plant roses and get petunias. The Lord says to us, we must lose our life to gain eternal life. He says, what am I to say in this hour? It's interesting, even the Lord recognizes our weakness in that moment, but he says, no, this is for the reason I've come in this hour. And so what are we to do? Well, we're to be wise and we're to recognize that our life is given to us for the sole purpose, yes, of glorifying God, but to live. And this is the thing, those of us who have come from the world those of us who spent our years in debauchery, in violence, in immorality, those of us who have groped in the darkness, we know what that darkness is like. We know that it's nothing that you want to play with. There's no life in it. And we also know the sweet taste of death. Not the death that the world brings, but the death of the flesh that brings life. How many of you here, reflecting back, for some of you five years, for some of you 10 years, for some of you 20 years, for some of you 30 years maybe, what would you trade? I know I wouldn't trade the life I have in Christ for anything. Because I remember the darkness. I remember the death. I remember it vividly. And because I remember it vividly, I'm able to recognize daily the sweetness of the life of the kingdom. The Lord cast out the devil. And so for over a thousand years, this world was transformed. There was order. There's dignity, there's nobility. Kings did their jobs. Husbands were able to be husbands and wives were able to be wives. Children, they honored their parents. Yes, there was brokenness. Yes, there was human failing. But the world was put in order. 
And so now the devil has been loosed again for a short time. He makes war against the saints. But even in his war against the saints, we see the promises of the Lord are even still true. We think of St. Theodosia, who the world looks and says, why would you lay down your life? Why would you defend paint and wood and gold? We look at St. Luke. Why would you give up everything? Why would you endure the shame and the violence of the state? For what? To repair your enemies, to heal those who curse you? Why would you do that? The world still doesn't understand. The world is still blind and groping. But we, we see. Because the saints light the way for us. The saints show us not just in empty words, but in reality that Christ has conquered. He has overcome the world. And that it is in tasting death with him and losing their lives that they are glorified, that they receive eternal life. What a waste. People spend so much time and effort trying to find immortality here, but they're forgotten. The houses that they've bought, two, three generations, other people will live in those houses and they will not be remembered. The companies that they've built have been passed on to other men. But the saints, you still remember them. How many centuries ago was St. Theodosia? How long ago was St. Luke and they're remembered? They had eternal life. And so we still have this remembrance and we drink of this cup, this cup that grants us immortality. So we look to them and we ask them even now, grant our dear sister as she struggles this morning May God grant her immortality. May God glorify her and her family for their valiant struggle and their willingness to not waver in the face of such struggle that they hold to Christ. May God strengthen them with the prayers of St. Luke, St. Theodosia, that Christ strengthen all of us. Christ is risen. Amen.